Do the current practices of many public spaces and restaurants actually help prevent the spread of COVID, like wearing your mask but not at the table, like not when you're eating, or like six feet between tables, that sort of stuff? Does that does that actually help? <laughs> you're just trying to get us in trouble, aren't you? I'm not trying to get you guys in trouble. This is what the people want to hear. Um. <laughs> I'm happy to, to take that one, but I'm going to lean on you two to back me up. Um, right, Tom. Yeah, right. So I, I, I think the short answer is going to be, we're going to operate in the shades of gray territory. You're asking better or worse is, is a scale, not an absolute, right? Mm -hmm. um, is it better to wear masks? Sure, right? It, it, neutral or better. It can't possibly hurt. Mm -hmm. uh, is it better to space people out? can't hurt. It's either neutral or better, right? Uh, fewer people indoors having windows open, all of which is going to be better or neutral, right? It can't hurt. How much it helps is the question mark, right? And, and I don't have the numbers. So I, again, I won't speak to them. Uh, but I can tell you that that just based on logic, really and truly, if we wanted to, to nip this thing in the bud, we would shut down all businesses everywhere. Every single person would stay home for two weeks and that would be it, right? So what you're really asking is, is it safe enough to open up businesses and, and try and do both the economy and safety simultaneously? Um, so I can tell you that if you're infected and you're walking around a restaurant without a mask, you're probably going to infect more people. Um, that being said, if you're infected and you're sitting at a table by yourself, you're probably still dangerous to some people. Uh, but maybe if I'm on the far corner away from you in that restaurant, I have a higher probability of being safe. Um, so I imagine all of these things help. It's just a, a semantic question of how much, 5%, 20%, 50%, 90%. And, and I don't know, this is where I'll lean on, on Katie and Chris. I don't know that those numbers are, are really fully known. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think one thing that's interesting actually is, um, I mean, cause so obviously, you know, this is the first time the world has dealt with COVID-19. So we don't really have a lot to benchmark against as to how these uh, measures are working. But what has been interesting is, um, you're looking into things like the, the flu. So the flu in many countries has been almost non-existent now because all of these social distancing measures are in place, right? So, and we do have years of you know, historical data to compare that against, you know, the flu is a seasonal uh, disease that happens every year. So you can say that this is, you know, the flu numbers are dramatically reduced. So suggesting that, you know, what we are doing is helping prevent the spread of disease, you know, is, uh, which is, you know, where's the gray area, you know, where are we in that shade of gray? It's, it's harder to say, but definitely, I think that points to saying that you know, what we're doing is being effective. Um, yeah, I'd agree with that. I think that's a, a great way to look at it is we do have fewer few flu cases, so it must be doing something. Mm -hmm. uh, so it stands to reason that another similar respiratory disease would, would also be affected by these measures. Gotcha. But I right. will say too, I mean, on, along those lines, the flu's down everywhere, right? Even in countries that didn't do much, it just sort of went away. I, I don't have an explanation for it, mm -hmm. but like it's gone in India, right? I, how is it gone in India? Right? I, how is that even possible? <laughs> right? like, I have no idea. I mean, I'm not saying like I can explain yeah. it, um, but I think like these are the kind of things, right? That there's a question here mm -hmm. that needs to be answered, right? Because I, at the end of the day, I'd say all three of us are interested in trying to protect the most people possible. Mm -hmm. And I don't know that any of anybody here is interested in in security feeder, right? Like I, I feel really good about it. It didn't save any lives, but everybody feels pretty good. Mm -hmm. um, so like that, I mean, it, it kind of brings back to what we were saying at the beginning. Like I, I really want an autopsy when this is all mm -hmm. over. I think you could make lots of synthetic controls from lots of places, right? I, I, you can watch yeah. what other places do. Um, you could, you know, I, if I were running a lab, I'd be going down to Texas right now to try and figure out what's compliance look like, because that's a big question. Yeah. You know, if everybody's still complying, but the mandate's gone, then it's a useless control. But if everybody goes, woohoo, spring break, right, <laughs> then you can find something out. Uh, mm -hmm. Like, yeah. I don't know. I mean, I, I think it's an interesting question. And I, it's just, I don't, I'm not hopeful that the autopsy I want will happen because it would involve going back and, and assessing damage done. And if mm -hmm. you can't score points with it, then I don't think anybody in the current arena is going to do it. Right? Like if I can't go back and be like, yeah, but that guy did it, um, <laughs> then I don't think he's going to do it, which is unfortunate. 